Hey guys, welcome back. This video, I wanted to teach you guys how to overload a method. We also want to talk about optional parameters, which is also a very helpful thing. Monday.com is your visual project management solution. This is the tool that allows you to see where every task or project stands with a single glance. With a fully customizable interface, you can create the exact workflow that you need for you and your team to get stuff done. Monday.com is available on mobile and integrates well with some of the most popular tools out there. So get your life in order by giving it a try for free. Link in the description. Now, first, let's talk about the purpose of optional parameters and overloading. So optional parameters will allow us to basically have a parameter default to a value if it's not supplied. Very helpful if we want to basically make the calling side a lot easier where they don't have to worry about passing in a million different arguments. Now, overloading is usually done when we want to create different versions of the methods that might work in little different ways or take different types as inputs and so forth. So first, I'm going to show you guys a common thing you might see with overloading and it'll help you understand how overloading works, but then I'm going to teach you a best practice when you want to do this. So what am I gonna show you? I'm going to basically show you how we can create this output method and you can see this one takes a number of times. I'm going to create one where it doesn't take anything using overloading. So it's gonna look like this. We don't have any parameters here. And then all we're going to do is say return and we can customize it somehow, such as my name is plus full name. This is a very simple method. It'd probably just be easier to, to do it from the caller side but this gets our point across. So now we have an output method that doesn't take a number of times and then one that does. So which one gets called depends on whether you pass something in as an argument or not. So you might see this a lot, but it's actually best practice just to use a default parameter when you want to make something optional. We can actually do the same thing by just making a more versatile single method. So we can just default times to one. So I'll put it one time. And you can see when we hover over it, it says method with optional parameter is hidden by overload. So that's basically saying we're creating the same functionality as we're doing here. If you didn't pass in anything, it's going to default to using this one versus this one with the default value of one. Either one can work, but now let me show you guys how to invoke this. From the calling side, all we have to do is let's clean this up just a little bit. We can say user dot output and pass in nothing. And this output actually returns a string, so we actually have to console dot right line this thing. You could, you could do the console right line inside of the method if you prefer, that's up to you. Running this, we get my name is Caleb Curry. So you can see it invokes this overload, which has the same exact name, but different parameters, and it returns this. The alternative is to use the default parameter so I'm gonna comment this out, and now, when we don't pass anything, it's going to default to one. Running this, and you can see we get that same exact thing. The message is a little bit different in this code, and that's fine, we have an extra new line there. Um, so you could get rid of that, or you could just do console.write, however you wanna do if you don't wanna have those two extra spaces there. But you can also default to different values, so we could default to five. And now you can see we get five in a row. So we talked about overloads in this video and we also talked about default parameters. In upcoming videos, I'm going to be teaching you better uses of overloading beyond just making optional parameters in a more complicated way. So just some examples of what we might cover with method overloading is we could create a search method, one that would take a string first name, a string last name, and then another one which we could actually pass in a user with a first name and last name and it could compare values. So we'll get into that very, very soon, so stay tuned.